Good morning and welcome here. I'm so glad that you've decided to join us this morning here at First Free Methodist Church. Uh, before we continue on, I just have a couple of announcements for us. The first is on the 24th, December 24th, we are having our Christmas service. So you can join us at 6 p.m. both online and in person to enjoy that. And also on the 26th, we will be having our regular service. However, it will be online only. So if you come to the church, there will be no one here. So we want to give you that option to stay at home with your family and enjoy uh, this Christmas holiday with them at home. Uh, that is all of our announcements. So uh, would you please just continue on in worship with us? Thank you.
Luke 1, 39 to 45. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zachariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. Sometimes when we are trying something new, or when we are facing a difficult decision, or when we want to celebrate something, or when we just feel or when we just feel lost and alone and uncertain about life, the universe and everything, we need a blessing. We don't always think of it that way or or word it like that. We say we need advice or support or companions or someone to come along beside and lift us up again so we can see more of our more than the tops of our shoes. We seek a blessing. For many of us, we go home and we ask mom. We talk to dad or brothers and sisters, close friends, those we grew up with, those who knew us best. We want them alongside. We want to be in their presence. Somehow we know that being there, being home, will make all things better. Maybe it won't be fixed or solved or wished away, but at least we won't be alone. We seek a blessing. Mary, faced with an incomprehensible burden and gift, ran to Cousin Elizabeth's house, looking for someone who knew a little of what she was going through, looking for a place to hide until the reality of her condition could become something real. And she received a blessing. The prophet Micah spoke of a blessing coming to an unexpected place, an unassuming town, yet by God's grace would become the means through which God would bless the whole world. Bethlehem, the little town of blessing, we seek a blessing. We light these candles, the candle of hope, of peace, of joy, and of love, as a sign that we know blessing and we know waiting for blessing to be felt and lived. We light these candles as a sign that we still seek a blessing. It's time to go home. A lot.
of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. We sing to the God that heals. We sing to the God that saves. We sing to the God who always makes a way. Because He hung up on that cross and He rose up from that grave. My God, still rolling stones away. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. Be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. We shout out your praise.
the prisoners Now we're running free We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace Let the house of the Lord sing praise We're the beggars Forgive me, accept it, redeemed by his grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. Let's join in the house of the Lord. Let's join in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. Shout out your praise. Shout out your praise. Shout out your praise. Shout out your Would you please join with me in prayer? Heavenly Father, we come to you in awe of your goodness and your greatness. And we love you and we adore you, Lord. And we just come and bring our sins before you. We confess the things that we have done, the things that we have left undone, those thoughts, words, and deeds that... uh, did not bring you glory or honor or praise, but hurt and condemned others. And we just pray, Lord, and ask for your forgiveness and be that we would be reminded to turn away from those sins, from those, those actions and those thoughts and words. And we're just so thankful for your love and your goodness, Lord, and your faithfulness that you are forgiving and loving. And we are, I'm so thankful that we have this opportunity to come together and to worship you, Lord. And I just pray, I just pray, Lord, that as we prepare our hearts and our ears to hear this message that is prepared for us, Lord, uh, that you would be at work in us and in our community and in our leaders, Lord, and that we would uh, be a people that brings you glory and honor and praise. And I just pray for, uh, yeah, for wisdom for all of us as we uh, lean into what it means to be a follower of you in this time of celebrating Jesus coming to earth as a little baby. We pray all these things in the name of your Holy Son, Jesus. Amen. One of the television shows I enjoy watching from time to time. I can't admit to seeing the whole series, but catching it at moments is The Voice. It's a reality show, a musical competition that begins with a blind audition, and that's probably why I like it. Unlike other music talent shows where the judges can see people and choose based that, this show, the judges are with their backs turned for that first audition, just simply listening to the singers as they sing and as they perform. And then as they hear that voice singing whatever song they've chosen, they turn around and select them. I think it points out for us the struggle we have in our society to be focused on the superficial, the outward appearance of things. And so... One, it's often we can sometimes focus on and forget, focus on what seems significant and forget what is truly significant. And that's what I love about the good news that God brings to us. 
being able to look beyond the surface as the Lord does, beyond what uh, we would say might be ordinary, and God can see past those things and see how he can use the seemingly insignificant, the seemingly small, the weak, to transform this world. That's the good news. And that's the way that the Lord works through Scripture. One of my favorite Bible verses speaks of that, this, this nature of God's character, is the verse that says in 1 Corinthians that God chose the foolish things of this world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of this world to shame the strong. So we love, I, I love it, maybe you do too, the underdog story. Maybe for you, I know in my own life, there are times where I have felt foolish. Maybe you felt that too. Maybe there are times in your life where you have been tagged with the badge of being less than. Maybe you have felt weak before. Well, that's where the good news that the Lord brings comes in. And that God surprises us and uses what was weak or seemingly powerless. And he moves through that. And this morning we're going to take a look at how even where the place that God chose for his chosen one, Jesus, his son, the Messiah, to be born. And is, is it's an example of this. I'm going to look in the Old Testament book, Micah, chapter 5, and I'll read verses 2 to 5. But you, Bethlehem of Frath, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. Therefore Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor bears a son, and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand, talking again about the ruler that is to come, he will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they will live securely. For then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth, and he will be our peace. So Micah reveals here in this message that he brings to Israel that God is going to use what seems to be small to redeem and to reshape and to transform the world. As he says, but you, Bethlehem of Phraith, though you are small among the clans of Judah. And as we think about Bethlehem, as you think of the list of cities, that could be considered great in the world. Maybe you're thinking of the seven wonders, that kind of thing. Bethlehem doesn't really rate high there. And yet, God chose it. And technically, I guess we should say right off the hop, is that technically Bethlehem's not a city. It was a village. In fact, scholars say there was maybe no more than, you know, 150 people that called Bethlehem their home. So, that's a pretty small town. It's one of those villages that was kind of off the main highway. It was a bypass from the bypass, so to speak, right? It was just eight kilometers southwest of Jerusalem. And yet, Bethlehem is chosen. Micah says, you know, he has to distinguish it. He says, Bethlehem Ephrath. Because there were other towns named Bethlehem. So even the name Bethlehem is not unique. But this Bethlehem is. There were Bethlehems around different places. And now, of course, as we move forward to today, there are Bethlehems all over the world. The name itself, Bethlehem, means house of bread. And the name Ephrath, Ephrath means fruitful. So you could almost get the sense as you hear that idea of the house of bread that this would be the home of the Pillsbury Doughboy, but it isn't. <laughs> this is the town where Jacob, when he traveled with his family, had to stop as Rachel, his wife, gave birth to a son. So she gave birth to a son there. And then later in the journey in Jacob's life, as Rachel dies, then they come back to Bethlehem 
and she was buried there. So one of the other names that Ephrath means is, you know, place of ashes or heap of ashes. There's also another claim to fame for maybe what I would call this half-horse town. It was where Ruth and Naomi went. If you think of the Old Testament book of Ruth, and she travels there, and then Ruth marries Boaz, and they have a son named Obed, and Obed is the father of Jesse, who Jesse is the father of David. So this is King David's family hometown. Remember that whole story of King David being selected by the prophet Samuel, for those of you that know it, because David was really one of those opportunities for God to show and choose the least of these again. David was the youngest of his family. He was the smallest. He was kind of the runt of the litter. And as you think of David's family and his, his tribe, they were from the least in the tribes of all of Israel. So Bethlehem kind of falls suit with that. It's this small town, the runt of towns, and that's where King David comes from, Bethlehem. Oh, little town of Bethlehem. And this little town really has more happening than people realize. As you think of that story, uh, I was reminded of it this week, thinking about Micah's passage the story of the Christmas carol that we sing at this time. We've sung it a bit, and we're going to sing it again on Christmas Eve, so we haven't sung it this morning. It's a great example of how God's power moves through things that maybe are seemingly insignificant. Philip, Phillips Brooks was an Episcopalian minister from Boston, and right after the American Civil War, naturally, You know, he had a fairly large church. He was a powerful preacher. He was feeling pretty exhausted. And so he took a time of sabbatical. And part of his sabbatical was to go on journey to the Holy Land. And so Phillips Brooks goes off to the Holy Land in in the fall of 1865. And again, the American Civil War ended about April. And on December 24th, 1865, Phillips takes a horse, he rents a horse, and he travels outside of Jerusalem to Bethlehem. He goes to attend a Christmas Eve service, and knowing that the Church of the Nativity is there. And he finds himself caught up in the moment, and he's thinking as he rides on his horse and he looks around, he he thinks of the fields and the hills where the shepherds are, where they would have watched their flocks, and where angels sang, heralding the birth of Jesus, God's Son. Then he goes to the church, and the service, he writes, went on for several hours, I think uh, around five hours, wonderful singing this beautiful time, Christmas Eve. And Brooks writes these words, I remember standing in the old church in Bethlehem, close to the spot where Jesus was born. The whole church was ringing hour after hour with the splendid hymns of praise to God. How again and again it seemed as if I could hear voices I knew well telling each other of the wonderful night of the Savior's birth. That time in Bethlehem with the music and the singing, it stirred something in his heart that really, I think it ministered to him particularly about the night that Christ was born. And as he recollected, you know, this idea of angels singing, but only shepherds to hear the good news. While the rest of Bethlehem just kept on sleeping, and for them it was a dreamless night, and heaven was silent. Then three years later, he's back in ministry in Boston, And it's Christmas time, and he's wanting to offer his congregation something special, something that uh, would stir their hearts. And so he remembers his time on sabbatical in Bethlehem, and he writes a poem and then gives that poem, the five stanza poem, to the church organist, Louis Redner. Louis Redner was trying to come up with a tune, and, and, and history tells us that 
He couldn't come up with something until the night before they were supposed to sing. The children's choir was supposed to sing with the adults. And so he writes it, and those beautiful notes came to Lewis Redner. And then that special morning, they sang it. And the focus of the carol is the Bethlehem town, that place that God chose for his Messiah to be born. And those beautiful words, the hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. Talking about Bethlehem and about Christ coming. As Micah delivers God's message, he speaks to a nation that struggles under foreign attack. They're being, they're being invaded. And God is promising Israel, who is in this terrible place, of being brought home again. You can wait and, and be patient. You're going to return. And there will be the blessing of home again, God says. And he fits it into these words. And God's Savior, his anointed one, will bring someone to lead them. For years the people have, been, have felt lost and maybe directionless. They've lacked any meaningful guidance. They've had kings but those kings really haven't served God well. And out of Bethlehem, Micah says, as he delivers God's message, out of Bethlehem will come a ruler, a shepherd. He will lead us as a shepherd with strength. What kind of strength? The strength of the Lord. You know, we live at a time right now of this push for independence. It just continues to go on and on about wanting to be our own people and not worry about others, not worry about community, freedom of choice. But there is this reality that people need good leadership. They need people that are good stewards, wise leaders. And the Bible tells us, in fact, that, that without God's vision, without clarity of vision from God, the people perish. And one translation says. Or another way to say that is without God's vision, the people cast off restraint. They're aimless. And when we're aimless, we end up getting ourselves in trouble. And so we need someone to lead us. And the promise that Micah gives here from the Lord is that God is sending his son, Jesus, to lead us. Jesus is coming as the shepherd, to lead us home. And then Micah says, and they will live securely, for then his greatness, again talking about the Messiah, the shepherd, will reach to the ends of the earth. So not just in one single spot, but will go further to the ends of the earth. There is a truth being spoken of here in that, as Micah talks about God's invitation home, that home brings safety. Think about your life now just for a moment. How many times have you wrestled with fear? How many times maybe where you've felt insecure? Because I think each of us deal with insecurity at varying levels at some time in our lives. We can feel overwhelmed by the unknown. I mean, we like to have things a certain order. We like to be heading in a certain direction, knowing where we're going. Maybe you're uncertain about work or jobs. Maybe it's uncertainty about the relationships you have. Maybe there's uncertainty about health. The antidote to that uncertainty which breeds and bleeds into fear is hope. Resting secure in the promises that God makes. And if we're found in Christ, then we find security, we find safety, we find this blessing of security and hope. And that's why Micah says, and he will be our peace. Micah's talking about political peace, but it's also talking about the peace of God, this invitation that God calls us to be home where we'll receive the blessing of peace. As we think of this season, as we think of 
Christmas, we can't help but think of it's a season of Emmanuel, God with us. And John tells us beautifully in his gospel that Jesus made his home, his dwelling among us. So this reality then is that he invites us, Jesus, invites us to be home with him. And then there's this thing that happens. Christ comes to live and be at home here and then invites us to be at home with him. And then in turn, we're encouraged to go out and invite others into Christ's home. Imagine what that looks like if we live out this truth, this promise of one who leads us, who brings us security, and who brings us peace. Knowing where we're headed because we have a leader, we have this shepherd who leads us in the strength of the Lord. Where there's fear and uncertainty, he brings security and safety, and we can know peace. And that is the message that's worth sharing. And that all comes from this lowly little village, this backwater town in Judea, this little town of Bethlehem. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, this morning we thank you for the truth of your gaze that sees things that maybe we would not and uses people and places to transform the world. We acknowledge, O oh God, our blindness, our misjudgment, and we pray, O oh God, that you would just pour out your grace on us for those times where we've been too critical. Those times where our hearts have been filled with fear and uncertainty. And we pray, O oh God, that you would help us as we live with you, at home with you, that you would give us your clarity of vision, your sense of security and safety, and that we would know your peace and then share it with others. And we pray this now in your matchless name, Jesus, the one who was born in Bethlehem. Joyful, joyful, we adore Thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before Thee, opening to the sun above. Mount the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the darkness doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. With joy surround me, let them have reflect thy rays. Stars and angels sing around me, center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, vale and mountain, flowery meadow, flashing sea. Chanting bird and flowing fountain, call us to rejoice in thee. Thou art giving and forgiving, ever blessing, ever blessed. Wellspring of the joy of living, ocean depth of happy rest. Thou art Father, Christ our brother, all who live in love undone. Teach us how to love each other. Lift us to the joy divine. Mortals join the mighty chorus which the morning stars began. Father, love is reigning o'er us. Father, love binds man to man. Ever singing, march we onward. Victors in the midst of strife. Joyful music lifts us sunward in the triumph of life. Joyful music lifts us sunward in the triumph song of life.
And now receive the benediction. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning. And hope to see you join us for our Christmas Eve service. Have a very blessed day. Merry Christmas.